Cooney, your archer, but take two for the live Saturday paint along of Fallen Meadow, this fabulous autumn landscape. If you are brand new here, hi, so happy to have you at the live. If you're here on the replay, thank you so much for joining us. This is a fully guided painting lesson, which means that I'm gonna not just show you that I can paint this landscape, I'm gonna show you that you can paint this landscape by fully explaining every part of this process so you can duplicate it at home. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He is the one who figures out like why the stream crashes when the stream crashes <laughs> and how to get us back online, gets all the cameras to follow me around, and also, and this is a very important job that he has, he reads the comments and the questions. So we have a group of moderators and the moderators try to make sure that if you have questions that they get captured and then they also try to make sure John sees them because our stream goes very, very fast. Yes. If we get to 300 likes, we're going to do a little dance and I might get a little kiss. So that's Ooh. always my favorite part of the show is to get a little kiss from John. This is new. It's been added, but you know, he's done it like three times. So now it's guaranteed. Well, I, I, you have a pretty good chance. We already have, already have 240 people out here with us and this is on our reboot and 58 likes. So thank you guys. Wow. Like we came back on the likes fast. I was like a little worried because we were like real high on the likes on the scheduled one. And then it... And the engine doesn't even know what we are right now. I think it says greatest painting ever in the description. <laughs> if you're coming in on the live and it said greatest painting ever, we're actually not responsible for that. That is, oh, oh, that was my bump. I that is, John is responsible for what you're seeing right now. But on the greatest painting ever, which this might be, no, on the greatest <laughs> painting ever, it's our system does that. I'm going to have a little sip of coffee. Oh, yeah. It's going to take two cup of coffee to get through today. This is it's my a, froggy cup. It's a two cup of Joe day. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. with you. I'm with you. I got my cup of coffee back here. I'm going to slowly go over there and help my moderators who are like scrambling. <laughs> I know Lisa's. She's if got you her... see a little wrench by a person's name, they're a moderator. Thank you, all of our wonderful moderators. Why don't you t t tell them about our moderators, tell them about liking and subscribing, and tell them about our wishes. Oh, yeah. If you're feeling optimistic that you're going to be able to do this painting, you're excited about that, you can go ahead and give a like, comment, and a subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> to us, that would be really helpful. That helps the YouTube algorithm know we're here. And it's a great, really fun way to support the channel. I don't know how fun it is. I do read the comments, though. Oh, yeah. It, you might not know that. And a lot of times that is how I decide what we're going to paint. And this painting is a lot about viewer comments. We're going to have picture in picture on the show, of course. I'm going to put out my 11 by 14 canvas board that I got. <laughs> Yes, you can do that in a pack. I do those and this is really nice. Um, it lets us do some nice, more complicated landscapes and not have the time get away from us too much. And it's gonna help y'all at home kind of keep your costs down and your storage issues because some of y'all are a hundred paintings in. Mm -hmm. So I gotta be thinking about that experience on my end. I have some wishes on my canvas. Oh yeah. If you're brand new here, we do wishes not just painting wishes because I think you have to be optimistic about a white canvas becoming a painting and you should be optimistic about your life. I have a wish for Jennifer who's just gotten a really upsetting diagnosis and so we're wishing for healing and strength for her. Our own Gracie uh, and you guys probably have seen her in the chat and Lindsay and everywhere she is under the weather so we're hoping she feels better. Our Phoenix Fire needs strength to her body she's going through some pain right now and little brush Zoe Hi, Zoe is having some tonsil stuff. And so I'm just wishing that her temperature comes down and she gets to feeling better. And somebody gives that girl um, some soy ice cream or non-dairy ice cream in mass. Um, I keep pushing the wrong button. You do. Love to teachers everywhere. Uh, many of you are on break right now, so just enjoy that. <laughs> and then this painting um, and then healing. Uh, Luann wishes for peace and generally the community has been wishing for healing just for themselves, for their bodies. And so we put that out there and here's the most important thing. This particular painting was a viewer request. This is dedicated to something. We could also put that a curtain. Down. It, this particular painting is de dedicated to Rob and Michael. Happy birthday, Michael. There's going to be a surprise. Uh, towards the end of the painting for you guys and um, we're gonna put a little something in there that I think hopefully is gonna feel really good and we're just lots of happy birthday wishes and lots of healing Rob and Michael asked for a landscape and this is your landscape mm -hmm. fallen meadow is what I titled it because I should never be allowed to title anything 
more coffee, sippy, sippy. Let's talk about the materials. Okay. Oh. That we're doing. Let's talk about the materials. Let's see if I can talk about materials. Let's see if we can find the oh. palette cam is I there. Found it. Okay. This is a Lizarin Crimson Hue, right? This is Cad Red Light, and you can get this in Hue. Oh my gosh, we're already Sherpa. No. We are. No. 305. No. We are absolutely. Playing a kiss on me while I'm talking I about these materials. I will come you do that. I, I will. You keep I'm telling the materials. I'll get some. All right. I'll keep telling the I'm materials, so and then prepared. we'll do a dance, and I get a kiss. So this is Cad Red Light. If you guys have student paint, right, that's Artist Loft, that's those cool text basics, your paint has no real cadmium in it. It is Hue. If you're in a professional brand paint, and I'll show you the difference just so you guys know, this CP Cadmium. Uh -huh. Has real cadmium pigment. This cadmium yellow medium hue has no cadmium. Ah. It's an approximation of what cadmium would look like. It's no cadmium. It's just no. Marcy, pigment. Marcy wants to know. She doesn't have a lizarin crimson on hand. Will any crimson work? Yeah, just go for a crimson. You're just trying to get a, a deep purple with your ultramarine. I have yellow ochre here. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know you're still over there. Okay. Yellow ochre. I have ultramarine blue. I have burnt sienna. I have phthalo green, I have titanium white, and I have two dops of my very favorite acrylic glazing liquid gloss. This is something I came into recently. It is like a pro oh, there you go. It's a product that I'm into. It is not a sponsorship of the show. I am not a golden rep by any means. <laughs> by any means. Um, though I do totally dig them. Um, but this product is insanely cool. It slows down the drying time of your paint and allows you to glaze, and that's super helpful. Um, just something to think about as we're going to be doing more and more landscapes. If when you're out, you can get either zinc white or transparent mixing white for down the road landscapes, that's going to be really helpful because in landscape painting, you might not know this, titanium white can kill your color and overwhelm your painting, much like Mars Black can. And now that we're doing landscapes, we're going to get into some stuff. Let's oh. do a little dance. Do I have enough energy? I can't believe I haven't even started painting yet. I want my Texas snowflakes back. Texas snowflake. it's, it's that time of year, isn't it? Texas snowflake time. <laughs> I'm almost thinking in three weeks I could turn on the fireplace. <gasps> and you know what? <laughs> don't forget, don't forget if you're new here, guys, to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if you want to join more of the Sherpa shenanigans that carry on after the show, you can go uh, to the rsherpa.com where we have live chat going on there and everybody hangs out. I'm in that chat. Shares. Yeah. And periodically I drop stuff that only that chat gets to see. Oh, yeah. We, we're in there all the time just yeah. kind of hanging out. It's and you a, only it's a know lot what's happening if you go to the chat. Yes. Guess how much chat costs? How, how, how much? Free. Is, why is it free? Just show up. You can. Sh it's the cost of finding the chat. That's <laughs> <laughs> the cost okay. of you locating the chat, and it doesn't work on mobile. It does. So it, that's no, it your does. cost. It does. So it works on most mobile. It's in the. If you're looking for the chat icon, it's. Well, you have to log into the website, and it's in the lower right hand corner. A little chat looking button. You have to push, and it slides it out. We're working on getting a bigger button. What can I say? Bigger. I'm a button pusher, so that's, man. That's your chat cost I'm right there. On. And right. you will get behind the scenes things and hear Sherpa things that you would not hear anywhere uh, else. Yeah, I'm so that. weird in chat. Also, you'll find out I can't spell. Okay, so just, it's not a restricted to chat. That I can't spell? That you're weird. Oh, yeah. No, totally. You guys know that by now. Yeah. All right. So we did a little bit of the, per if you've been on the Big Art Quest, you know a little bit about perspective now. Yes. And there'll be a small amount of this. First, I want to take our landscape and just make a little horizon line. All right. This is our horizon line. This is where objects visually disappear. It's where the sky meets the land. Just in the lower thirds. All right. Yeah. And then... I'm going to come up about, let's just say, three to four fingers. And I'm going to draw a very light. I'm using watercolor pencil because, and I'm using green because it will vanish into my paint colors. And I'm kind of sh making my tree line here. I'm going to take it to about a hand width for me because I don't have a ruler today. Over here, this is an approximation. You could do this in an art journal. 
These are not very specific <laughs> measurements. And a little bit about a thumb's worth below this tree line, I'm going to draw a little line that bisects up. All right? Can you guys see kind of from the one point perspective what we're doing here? If you did the big art quest, you're like, so. oh, that's what all that was for. Now, I'm going to get out an, a brush for acrylic. If you guys are looking for Goldilocks and it's um, 2016 and November, there's a bunch of them at the brush guys right yes. now. And you can use the code Art Sherpa to get 5% off. So I'm going to get a number 10 bright. I am on a Kurt brush quest myself. And so what I am looking for is a great number 10 bright in my life that I can get all the time. This is a firm filament brush with a good edge and good engineering double crimp ferrule. And I wouldn't want to put makeup on with it. So wherever you are in the world, you're looking for a firmer brush for heavy bodied paint. That's your, that's what you're looking for. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come get it a little bit wet. I'm going to drag off the extra moisture. You're going to notice it doesn't carry too much moisture though. And that's because of the design of the brush. I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre. Look how small amount over to my ultramarine. Just tinting it a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to get some of my titanium white. And this makes a very soft blue. Because I'm going to be blending, I'm pulling my glazing medium in. You can kind of see how this is all sort of on my brush. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come here and right at this horizon line. And this blue will be peeking out later. I'm going to paint to this blue. The glazing medium is going to keep my paint from drying out on me too quickly. And the reason we tinted with the yellow ochre is so that when we're doing this atmospheric sky, uh -huh. it's unified. A lot, we do that a lot in landscapes where colors are used throughout a landscape to create unity. Now, I, I've got so I have about a two inch band of that. Yes. Okay, so I've got some questions. I'm starting to get I my... have some answers as we're going. I'm yeah, getting a little ultramarine over to, now I'm just tinting my, just barely tinting my yellow oxide. I don't want it to be green. Yeah, I was a little slow getting to some of the questions today because getting my all my buttons back together. I'm gonna pull out some white here. Okay. Right into this and some more glazing, and we're gonna just start blending in this color towards the horizon uh, line. And while I'm doing that, you can ask me your questions. Wait, you, we just there we go. You, you just happen to either have hat or arm in way there. Oh, okay, there it goes. So. uh Let's see here. There was, uh, is there some, uh, something that can replace thalo green? Well, what you're looking for is you really got to do the big art quest, the color chart uh -huh. to see if you don't already have something that will approximate into it. Thalo green is a green that's cooler. It, it runs to, um, does it run to the yellow or blue? It makes, it makes green. So I think it runs to the blue. It's more of a blue green. Mm -hmm. Actually, this one is blue shade. So what you're looking for is a green that when you're mixing it with your cad yellow is going to make a bright green. Yeah. You know, so there's there's always approximations and different people's paint companies and stuff like that. But it's really about figuring out in your paint palette what your colors will do. <laughs> So the best answer to that is always the Big Art Quest color chart. So you see how I'm kind of blending this where there's that little blue hint along this line here? Yeah. I'm pretty fond of that. I'm going to pull out a little more blue, a little more of the oxide, a lot more white, glazing liquid. Now, are I'm going to come right up here above this line and work in some of this blue here. So are you, are you going to be using a cloud brush today? No. Interestingly enough, this guy does not have a cloud brush. But I saw you guys speculating that it did. Yeah. So they were, they were actually, they were, they were uh, I think Karen was asking about, let me scroll up and find out. Uh, someone was asking about blending, what. Blending, 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 blending. About what's a good so. cloud brush to use from the brush guys. 
Okay, um, the brush guys are working on finding my cloud brush, but what I like is a stiff bristled dome. Mm. It's a dome that's stiff bristled. Um, you can also sometimes, if you're at a sip and paint and you notice one of these half inch angles has died, mm -hmm. pocket it. <laughs> gotcha, okay. So and then the Deerfoot stippler, if it's stiff enough, will also work. But I prefer domes. Domes look like domes look like this. They have this shape. Gotcha. So one of the things they, they're, they're asking you could do is, could you show us all the brushes we're going to need for this video real quick? I don't know yet. <laughs> you don't know yet. Okay. So next video. Because as I'll be painting, I'll be like, what brush am I, am I needing? I do that on the pre-recordeds because at the end of the video, I know what I used. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So I'm pulling out some yellow oxide and some titanium white into the brush. Okay. All right. I'm going to get some glazing. And I'm going to come in and really, really kind of haze this up. All right. See how this yellow hazes the sky and it blends into our ultramarine. It's creating this distant, yeah. hazy space. Where I've got a blend, I've got this number 10, I've got my blending medium, and I'm just lightly feathering. And you can see that these edges become soft. This is very similar to what you'd see with an oil. I, have no, I know exactly what's just happened here. What? If you, uh, give me just a moment to stunt hands you. Did, did I smack my... No, I, I've, I've done... You're, you're going to tell everybody how much you love them and like, comment, subscribe, and share. Oh my gosh, really, I I'm love you guys. Thank you for coming and painting. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will do more landscapes till we all get good at this together. Can I, can I, sh can I surprise you? Yeah. There's over 360 people in the room right now. <gasps> no. I get another kiss? Oh. I don't know what's... I don't know what he's doing. Help me. Oh, what's happening? Oh, my mat? Or this? Oh, it's in the wrong positioning. You can now see the horizontal. I'm going to get a sip of coffee. Landscape so, painting is like this. I, it's really great when you get to do it outside and then a bug flies into your paint. And then you're like, do I just paint it in or do I have to scrape that sucker out? <laughs> so now I can... <laughs> So, so we were just at this really funky angle where it's like every time we, I, we, we, I moved the camera, it seemed like we were bumping into each other. I'm like, normally I don't have this problem. I wonder what's up. And I'm like, oh, look, there it is. I can just get it. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. It's like there's you know, tiny angles make such a big difference. <laughs> so normally I wouldn't be able to step away from my canvas and still get a blend in uh -huh. that amount of time. This would have all dried out. But because of this glazing medium, I'm not done. Now, I'm still in play. Can you re-show us how you did that yellow ochre orange again? I had no orange. Uh, the blue and the yellow ochre? Oh, I'm the sorry. The, uh, the, uh, can you yellow ochre mix color again, please? Sorry, I read All orange. Right. So what you're doing is you've got a little smidge of your ultramarine, and you're pulling it into your yellow, and you want it to still be yellow. See, like it went too high there. If that happens, wipe off your brush and get the yellow out. Pull it into the white. Right? Pull it into your glazing medium. Gotcha. Okay. And this is how you're getting the sky with this haze effect. We will be coming back with the white and the cad yellow. And we're even going to have to put this in as soon as this is dry, like right here in this space. But at the moment, we're just trying to create our atmosphere. I'm pulling just white into my brush right now. Okay. Glazing medium. And I'm just coming right here in the center. I don't want to take out my blue entirely. I just want to create haze. So I'm just blending here. We're blending needs right here in the center space of the canvas blending over to my right. Just notice, so this is really, my brush is quality, right? And, and quality isn't necessarily expense, right? Quality is about knowing what your paint needs and my paint needs a stiff synthetic bristle that will allow me, but still soft enough to blend. And that is about the engineering of this tip. This was true, Goldilocks is true. Any brush that we like, it has certain properties in common. And, and then honestly, that one was initially grabbed for pure vanity reasons because I like copper ferrules. This one isn't the copper ferrule. Oh, isn't it? Oh. This one is the copper ferrule. Oh, yeah. That was one that I was like, ooh. I, I really like copper ferrules <laughs> on so many levels. Yeah. This is a hog's bristle brush. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. 
I just like those. So when we have a sky that feels really like, woo, stuff has happened here. It's a little atmospheric here. Yeah. Like down at the bottom, you want it to be a little darker. If you lose that, go back with a little of the ultramarine and the ochre, right? And then just make sure that you enforce that because that's what pulls the weather in our meadow. Now they're asking on the on on the camera here. This is looking a little blue green. There's a there's a, a well. Is it? What's? Let me see. Oh. <laughs> I think that's a little bit, there is a smidge to it. It should look more like a hazy yellow. It yeah, should look like a see. hazy yellow with bits of the blue sky coming through. So it'll have some green undertones to it. I'm going to do what I can here. See, a lot of the times these colors are just such a pill for me. They are. John works at it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm working on some. I'm going to get some more white here and more glazing medium and just make sure that I've got this as softly worked as I can right here. Skies are super fun to do. They really are. Grab some more blending medium and just making sure that this is as hazy as hazy can be. Little ochre. There we go. Gold that up. You know. There it goes, yeah. You got it? Yeah. So is it ochre and ultramarine now? Yeah. Hazy. Yeah, that's yeah, that's closer. And yeah, it has a slight cast to it, but you want that. You want it. Yeah. You don't know you want it, but you want it. We're going to let this dry for a minute. Yeah. And and, and <laughs> unfortunately, guys, it's really exceptionally difficult to get a good, accurate color blend across all of the colors in a studio. Yeah. It's something that um, without using tungsten lights, which... We're, 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 but we're getting yeah. into LEDs. Yeah. I'm taking a little ultramarine. You can see I just worked the tip of my bristles here. On landscape painting, I generally do work just, see how far down they are? Mm -hmm. And I'm just taking the blue into my burnt sienna. And what I'm getting is a gray. Can you all see this awesome gray? Yeah, I can see that gray. Right. Maybe I want that gray a little more cool, so a little more blue. Ultramarine, burnt sienna. Adding a little of this, now, and I'm going to come along here and that, put in the basis of this part of the path. It's going to be kind of triangular hum, heading up this way. Now they're asking, the reference photo is a different color. Is it going to be different than this one? This isn't going to be the same painting, is it? Let's see how. It's not really. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's not really, but John's it's, it's, camera is having trouble with well, it. Well, I think what it is is that the, we had taken the picture, the reference photo, outside in the sunlight. And took its picture. And it, so it actually... And I just sent John the, the raw one right before we started. I didn't have... I did, Yeah, so that's... It's really that the, the reference photo color is off. So... Uh, but not much. Not much. That's that's what's throwing people there. Sorry. Not about much. I'll do better next time. Uh, it's a hard thing to do, and I think that's why a lot of artists don't like putting the reference photos in, is because the color balancing it's is so hard. It's tough, man. But I would rather you guys have it, and we just talk about these things. We'll work. Well, I'll keep working it out. It's color balance used to be like the number one thing that was always going on in the studio when I was growing up. Anything we had to print in a jacle. I don't feel bad because I feel like the Smithsonian really gets the. Oh, you pushed your button. Painting. Okay. Yeah, when you when you clip me here, I always do. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll move the clip. You know, I was thinking it'd be fun to have an extra camera on uh, just as a reference camera so you could actually put your reference photo <laughs> in a place that had a little camera on it that would just throw the picture and picture up for you. I'm going to take my burnt sienna into yeah. my uh, phthalo green. And again, this is just this basis of this first layer of color. I want this to be more brown. Right? Now I will just have these worked here. Now I'm going to let you know, Sidney, we've got th three over 360 people and 295 likes. 
going on right here. No in our way. Lovely. So I just want to say thank you to all of our community who's thank out here hanging so out with you much. guys. Love, love, love seeing you. It's been a it's been a pleasure to to paint and push buttons with you. It really is. So what are you doing there with that green? I am just filling in this space with this green. And which green is that? This is a little of the phthalo green into the burnt sienna, and this creates the basis of this more dark, more up-close focal point. So I'm using a lot of atmospheric perspective in this. In other words, this soft muted value versus this much more intense deep value mm -hmm. means that this weird triangular slice Feels closer than that backwards triangular slice. Now, is this going to need to dry here for a second down there? Down here? Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I would like to let you know that you just hit double Sherpa. No. Because life is good on Saturday and I like it. Life is good on Saturday and I like it. Life is good on Saturday and I... Am I freaked out about Turkey Day? No. Life is good on Saturday. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hopefully, some of you can join us for this Thanksgiving because we're going to have the off kilter crafter and his family here. My mom, John's mom, the kids, and we're going to be live during a good portion of the day because it's been around. I Hanging don't know out what with yet. you guys. Oh, That's what yeah. we wanted to do. We wanted to come hang out with you guys. So I thought that'd be a lot of fun. And we're, we did it last year, and so we're going to try to do it again this year. I'm going to rinse out my brush. And I do think I want to take it down to a smaller brush, a number eight. So I'm going to pull this number six. <gasps> a lot. Uh, a number six? Number six. Okay. Could have done a number eight, but I did a number six. And that happens. I'm going to get, again, see I'm getting the brush wet. The difference between these brushes for heavy bodied paint, these engineered brushes, is they don't overload water. That's what they do. Gotcha. So I'm going to take a little of my yellow oxide over to this burnt sienna phthalo green mix that I have here. I'm going to work it over here and I'm going to start putting in this line of trees. So I'll push this up and take this down a little bit. I want to just make sure that this feels like a line of trees. Trees in a line growing off in the distance where this walk could happen on this path that's right here. I might pull this little tree up. This one could be taller. And what you can see is that I'm trying to represent that very uneven natural space that trees occupy while still paying attention to my diminishing space, my diminishing lines for my perspective. And that's going to create the illusion of this space going away from me and this being the focus up close. So in other words, I as the viewer would be standing right here. There are more perspective videos coming out. I filmed right after our last perspective quest a um, kind of like refresher. And I'm going to keep doing that because I think as this stuff keeps going, it'll get easier and easier for us. And I honestly believe that if you just explain what's happening in art to people, they totally can do it. Yep. It's just a belief that I have. So far, y'all keep proving me right, which I love. Y'all keep making me a truth teller when I say people can paint. Pulling out a little more of the yellow ochre into the burnt sienna and... They have a green mix. I want it to be dark and muted so it feels further away than what I'm doing up front. And I'm just going to push this in here. There are a lot of ways to lay in a landscape. This is just one way where we build up an underpainting and then build layers. That's my preferred method of painting often is to create layers. But there's another method where you do an acrylic ground and then with one brush loosely sketch all of this in. Mm -hmm. you, it, they're both fine. Right? No, so I'm not working palette knife with this, so not as necessary to think it that way. Uh, Alex would like to know, how do you design these paintings? 
Well, this was from a reference photo on Paint My Photo. Yeah, you like the PMP guys a lot. I, I do like Paint My Photo a lot because it's a community sharing website where people who get to take more fabulous vacations than me or say live in Michigan and have fall <laughs> can share an awesome picture that they took that I as an artist can then go, oh, I'm going to paint that, but no one will sue me. Mm -hmm. And it's really awesome. And as an artist, this is my belief. I don't think it's the absolute belief, but I think reference photos are very important. I cannot be in every landscape. And I'm not as fit as Rick Negolero. I'm not going to kayak out. I, maybe someday <laughs> I will. I'm working on getting fitter. Kayak to an island with snakes and paint some stuff. Yeah. So reference photos are my friend. Now. I need them. What I like about PMP is you, you know how much it costs? It's free. <laughs> it's free. You're going to find on our channel a lot of, it's not that nothing ever costs money. Obviously, like our shirts cost money. Our mugs cost money. Our <laughs> mugs cost money. Which you can get at shop.theartsherpa.com. But <laughs> most of our stuff, most of our important stuff is not kept behind some kind of weird paywall. Yeah, we try to keep all the resources out here as free for you guys, make it easy for you to use. When, when we started this and I told you all my mission statement, my mission statement was that our art is free. Yeah. So, and we got to teach some of that art there. Mm -hmm. You, you know, I just need some Miss Janine mug froggy sippy sippy person. That's she, it's our favorite mug. I know she's just going, I want that mug right now. She is. And if she comes to the States, I'll take her to the Cracker Barrel and we'll get her a mug. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to rinse this brush out, get all the paint out of it and take it to the side. And I'm going to come back here because I know I'm going to have my trees in this space. Uh -huh. And I'm going to lighten this up a bit. I'm going to do some interesting, more atmospheric stuff. And this is where I'm talking about, in future, we will be pulling into Lemon Yellow or Cad Light. And we'll also be pulling into um, Zinc. Yeah. Not today, but in future, I'm just telling you, when the skies get more atmospheric and more interesting, that's going to be it. So see how I just put a little of this Cad Yellow and this white? I've got a lot of my glazing. And it's just that I'm going to want a little of this glow here that I can layer my trees over. Can you see it? Yeah. This implies that this is actually where the sun is. <sighs> Behind this <laughs> hazy, hazy, cloudy day. See this implication that I'm making? I'm implying this thought, this idea of it shining through. A lot of this is going to get just covered over. A lot of it gets, even this, all this gets covered over. It's crazy. The way we build it up. But first, I like that. That's looking really good. Mm -hmm. I might just smidge a little actual yellow, yellow. Because I like the way that that dapples out. And you can see I'm just creating a, a little dappled light space right here. Love it. Mm -hmm. I love it, love it, love it. I was drinking coffee. Were but you I'm, drinking I'm, coffee? I'm, I'm humming in agreement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, Linda. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Please do remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share while you're here. We forget to, uh, most of the time, say that enough. And <laughs> and YouTube, that's what it wants. It's, it's we do. The YouTube alter wants yeah. likes and so many likes and comments and subscriptions. So and thank you, guys. It shows you to other people. And we just want everyone to be able to pay it for free. Right. Well, that was That's an interesting the, squeal. The kids playing. You know, they do that. <laughs> All right. So I've got a little of my yellow ochre. And it had a bit of the green in it. It's not pure ochre, right? Yeah. And I'm going to bring it here. And I'm going to put a spot maybe right here underneath this section of the trees and pull it down. Maybe another little one. I'm going to dance some of this around through here. Oh, would you Come go? up here and add a little of this glow in this space. Not even rinsing it. I'm going to pull out my ultramarine and get back into my burnt sienna. Pull out some white. And I'm going to dash a little of this off into the distance, pulling this into me. Pulling that around. There's, you can see this brush here, how it's just, there's some blue here, and there's some brown, and there's some white. 
This causes new artists a lot of anxiety, but this is actually for acrylic painters some wonderful space. Now, if I were a hyper-realistic oil painter, this would make me very stressed out. <laughs> because I wouldn't want unexpected color ever to pop into my canvas. Right now, I am losing my canvas Boop. off my easel. <laughs> I'm going to get some more of this gray, a little more of my glazing medium. Maybe back here, pull this darker color along the edge of my trees. So I have it right here. Uh huh. Yummy glazing. And I'm saving money because this glazing medium helps me extend my paint a little further, too. I'm going to just make sure that there's a little bit of a shadow feeling underneath some of those trees. I'm going to pull this out. This gets painted, painted, painted over here in the corner. A lot happens here. I wanted to say thank you to Alex, all of our new Sherbets who are joining us today. I oh, see hi. all you guys. And all of our all of our regular Sherbets that I see out there, Lady White Fang and da Donna and, and, and Kathleen and Gail and, and, and Art Cams and Stephanie and Stephanie and Burgeons and all of the people who are our moderators. We love all you guys. I'll just do my pay. I'll I'll just do that all day though. Yeah, he will. I'll just romp a room And up. that's okay. Yeah. That is perfectly awesome sauce. Okay. I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow. Yep. Over to my phthalo. And I'm going to get actually, believe it or not, it's quite a bright green for this canvas. And I'm going to start pulling little downward brush strokes of light. And really what this is, is this is grass. I'll even pull it into this space a little bit. Pulling it down. Coming across here, pulling it down. And this is why I like you guys to have the reference photos because then it, if you're just trying, I've had to try, I'm, we're going to do this at some point. It's hard to just follow along with somebody if you don't have the reference painting. Do you see what I did there? I got too much thalo green. I came over and I pushed off my brush. Uh, whoa. So is that what you just? Yeah, like if I have too much of something, I just push it off. And oh. then go back into my paint. Oh, cool. That's just something I think that I do that is one of those, as painters, you have all these weird unconscious things. Mm -hmm. And you sometimes forget to tell people what you were thinking. I come over here and put a little of this brighter over here towards the right. Yeah. A little bit coming on here. Now, I probably will not manage to replicate dead on exact the painting just because you know i'm not making a forgery i'm trying to paint a painting so just know that's not the expectation on you either i'm going to pull a little of my yellow oxide it's got a little of the green loaded into it you can hunch it with some white and i'm going to start just on the front of this little tree here all through here adding some uh color depth that says these are fall leaves I'm just touching the brush and I'm thinking about this light hitting segments of this and what's happening when that happens is obviously that the tops of these would be more lit up right mm -hmm. got a little more green on my brush as the sunlight's coming down but then there'd be deep areas that wouldn't have as much going on what, right? Yeah. I don't have to worry about being too specific back here because honestly there's this big bunch of orange that happens. You just want a little of this green to show through. <laughs> so that's an interesting thing too is know where you don't have to put a huge amount of your attention but where you may want to be putting a lot of your attention as well in a landscape. Now, I, you know, I'm going to say we, we've got a lot of new people out here together. And I'm yeah. so excited about new people. This, if you're brand, brand new here, is a three hoot, what we call a three hoot. Mm -hmm. Which means it'd be good to have a few paintings under your belt. But because we're so in-depth in explaining it, we still consider this part of a beginner process. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, one of the exciting things, we've got a lot of husbands for with us, new, some new husbands here. So I'm going to say high five to Al and all the other guys. And Dude, know. the Sherp dudes. Yeah. And, and we got if, some dudes. If you, you know, I have to say, if you want to continue checking out uh, other, you know, like painting manly landscape, I will suggest uh, <laughs> Rick. 
you know? <laughs> the manliest of all landscapes. Don't send them away. I've been working no, just, on my... Just, I have been encouraged in the nicest possible way, because when it ever comes from my community, it's always nice, to, that I may over-feminize some of my work. It's, 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 Maybe no, represent it, some more rustic. Rick, dude, Rick is, Rick <laughs> is, you know, testosterone on canvas. Yes, he is. You know, All right. It's, so. <laughs> I want to take a little of my CAD light yeah. over to my yellow ochre. Notice I'm not trying to even avoid the green because it's okay if it grays it a bit. Yeah. Right? This is distant. This is far away. So it will still feel quite bright in this space. Look how bright it actually feels. Oh, wow, yeah. But you want it muted because I want this golden reddish glow to really be the pop that makes everything happen. Mm -hmm. Another thing that as we mix colors, we're going to pull them down into this space down here, interestingly enough. Oh, nice. Like you could take, come over here and put a little of this color right here. This is another landscape trick I'm fond of, not the only one in the universe. But I like to create color unity by saying, what is this a shadow? Is this a highlight? Putting it in its corresponding shadow or highlight place so that there's a unity in my um, landscapes. Weird thing I do. Hmm. Not every painter does it. I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always telling you not every painter does it because sometimes there's a thinking like there's just one way to do this stuff. I think for people. So I'm just using this square and notice like sometimes when I need to break up the shape and a more natural shape, I just turn the brush, twirl the brush in my hand. It's a thing I do. Is it? I'm going to come down here with a little of this rustic brown. I'm going to say some of this is just going fall over here. Mm -hmm. And I want to show that fallness happening. I'm pulling this up. Isn't that great how it does? Yep. I love it. Let's get some brown. And let's put a little of our alizarin crimson into our brown, just to be cheeky. Are you feeling cheeky? I well, you know, I'm I'm just and chuckling, chuckling over, over into here. And then the yellow, uh, the ochre. Our our moderators are 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 moderating with extreme enthusiasm. Are they? We ha did, did we have somebody that came by and had some stuff to they, say? They, they were they were like, "Come subscribe to my channel!" Boom! The Boom. hammer. It was awesome. I just and everybody cheers when it happens. You know, it was like. <laughs> I so believe in being a YouTube uh, creator because mm -hmm. I am one and it's a hard journey and um, I believe that YouTube creators we should hang with each other we should help each other out the best way though to get subscribers mm -hmm. in the universe is to make great content make and great then content get good at tag titling and describing yeah Wh whoever just came in this is my honest advice this is how I did it I wrote an article uh, on the um, YouTube mentor board yeah. thing for tips and tricks. It's doing really well. But basically, make a great video. If you title it really well, you describe it, use all 50,000 characters and you tag it really well, then people can find you. And if you do those things, the system will reward you by showing you more people. And that is the very best way to grow your channel. And then you make like friends with other YouTubers and then you collab and it's really a beautiful, amazing thing. There's your inside baseball for the day. That's, my, that's the inside baseball for whoever came by. Because I, I do want everybody to win. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take, a, I've got this very messed up brush full of paint and I'm just going to take it right over into my ultramarine. And because it's so full of color, look how that goes dark. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to make sure it's a little more blue. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to, Come up into this space along this little edge here. I just want some depth. I'm going to zoom in on that there. Yeah, I'm scrambling that. I might even take some of this down into this sort of grayed out ground. Taking it back and forth because I want this space to feel like there's some dappled light. That's what I want. So that's what I'm going to go for. Yeah. This is a full landscape painting. We're not even playing today. Oh, well, yeah? we're always playing, but... <laughs> No, we're more always games. playing. It's all about yeah. the landscape. We got a full house here, man. Do we? That's yeah. awesome. We've had over 350 people here, 375 likes. So, man, it has been packed. We've almost 400 people here most of the time. It's been pretty awesome. So. Pretty cool to me. I think I'm that's excited. pretty fantastic. I'm going to take a little of my uh phthalo green over to my ultramarine blue and i'm gonna go crazy by adding some burnt sienna into it 
I'm going to come over. I'm going to add a little of this into this up here, just a couple dabs. Um, and then we're going to start pulling some of this dark, distant green into the space. And I'm pulling it down. I'm trying to keep my shape super uneven. Oh, yeah. This is not dissimilar. Again, if you did Mountain Meadow, you're like, oh, I kind of know what we're doing here. Yes, yes, you do. Yes, you do. I'm going to pull a little of this up. This wasn't actually in the reference photo, but I felt like in the distance we needed a little. Yeah, do you have, can you put a link to that reference photo? Um, if you go to paint, yes, I can. Okay. It's, it, it, what, it won't take you there. Oh, that's problem. right. You have to be, that's, that's right. You have to be logged in to be able to get to the link. Yeah, but if you go to my page and you look at the painting, it has the link to the photo in it. Oh, okay, cool. So I definitely don't ever try to hide it. It's just I found that I can't just get people there. So I you took that color. Where'd you go? And I added some white to it. And I'm going to pull some of that down into it here. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm keeping this. And that's Maybe why you did some of this little green here. Gotcha. Pull it down a little bit over here. They feel like that th there should be a kraken somewhere in this. There's no kraken today. <laughs> Love you guys to death. There is no kraken today. <laughs> the kraken is not crack it up. <laughs> no kraken. I don't even know where I'm going. All right, I'm going to pull out some of this burnt sienna and a little of my alizarin, maybe a little white into it. And I'm going to just... Oh, let me go over there. Kind of start pulling this part of the landscape down. The very serene landscape. A little more of the alizarin, maybe. A little bit of that alizarin here. So it's not pure alizarin. It's the, you know, burnt sienna and the alizarin. And I'll come over here and I'm going to put some of this. Maybe a little bit right there. I like that green versus the, the red I'm coming through here. I add these spectacularly surprising colors simply because they start to create space in which everything gets a little more amazing. And I'll be constantly, you know, adapting this to the objects that are in. I just grabbed some blending medium so I could blend this a little bit. Now, it's, this brush is dirty. I'm going to come over and get some ultramarine. And again, some more green gets when it's dirty and you do that, then you get a lot of like really interesting colors. <laughs> and because of the palette I mixed, it doesn't really get dirty on me. Ah. Uh. Because of the way I chose my colors. It can, but it doesn't in general. I'm going to just pull some of this up here. This is darker and more neutral going back here. <laughs> What's funny? Gail's like, what about, uh, oh, no, it was Ian. Uh, uh, so what is the body of water? Uh, what? Oh, the, if that is a body of water in the painting. Okay, so. No, it, it's it, not a body of water. This is an area, this is a path that came up between the tree line and these up close trees and it had a lot of dappled light in it ah. and a lot of exposed dirt. Gotcha. But it reminded me a little bit of a river in the path and I like that part of the painting. Gotcha. Right? I was like, that's sort of interesting how that does that. And so that's what's going on there. Interesting. I'm going to rinse out my brush. And that's why it has that. So... Ian was suggesting perhaps a, you know, a, a Death Star poking out of the clouds. You all are so welcome. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's your painting. This is your time. You just create a way. So we'll, we'll help you get in the, the landscape. And then, you know, you can. You need to Death Star it up. I won't be offended. I, I, I respect these choices. And I love seeing that stuff. So please post it. And like right out there on theartsherpa.com, we give you, you got like plenty of room to upload all those crazy pictures. And we love to see them. And I'm going to start we sharing really those We really do. Up, so. I'm going to just pull out some yellow ochre. Theartsherpa.com. So yellow uh, ochre, especially the golden one, there's there's an opaque and there's a transparent version. The one you get at Michael's, generally the transparent version. 
And you can tell because on the tube, mm -hmm. you can see the black lines through it. Oh, yeah. I did this paint comparison once, and somehow the tube got painted either, I don't know, like wrong or whatever. You couldn't see the black line, so I thought it was an opaque paint. And I was like, what's up with this paint not being opaque? <laughs> it's just the wrong one. Where are you going? I'm keep. over here. I'm going to be dancing through uh, this yeah. center space, moving back you this just, way. You just keep. You, yeah. You, you, I, what I'm doing now yeah. is I'm putting some light. Messing with me. Coming down into this space. Just dancing up here. That's what I'm doing. I'm just dancing up here, putting some light into the space. You know, just dancing it up. We dance, dance, dance. Dance, dance, dance. I'm gonna rinse this out. I'm gonna add a little more orangishness, reddishness to this space over here. You can even take, believe it or not, a little of your alizarin crimson and your cad light to make. See how this is slightly darker? Mm-hmm. The yellow ochre. And let's put a little spot of this right here. You know, those long handled brushes like to like to mess with your microphone. You know, there. it's so funny, and when I say long handled, because I don't like really long, long handled that are like this, and so I was like, I don't like long handled brushes, and then I was like, Oh, this is all now called long handled. Alright, fine. <laughs> Fine, fine, fine. So I'm just trying to make more of an orange here, coming up the front, just in this back space. Just little dabs of it. You just want a little bit, like things just got interesting. That's all I'm saying. Up here, and you can go ahead and maybe put a little of this right here, over here on the lower left, put a dab of that. It's okay also if you come up here to the corner, maybe add a little Distant friend. Distant friends. I'm going to come here and balance out some of this space. Put a little back here. I'm having fun today. Anybody else having fun? And I think, looking here, I'm going to want a dark green to come down this direction. Wait, where at? From here, from over here in the left, down to the lower, kind of heading right, righterly. Okay. This is technical, don't get lost in the painting terms, writerly. Writerly. Go writerly. So that mix, again, is the phthalo green, the ultramarine, and the burnt sienna. Gotcha. I'm going to just make this, because I need this to be really dark in this corner. And what size brush is this? This is still the number six. Okay. And I, you know, again, pre-recorded will always, like, pull those out in that list, but when we're painting, sometimes we're just going along going, what brush feels right? Yeah. Because art for me is a very moody thing. Not for everybody, just saying for me. All right, so I've got that there. I might pull out a little more of the blue. Get a little white, because I need to gray that space up just a titch. I'm gonna send some light. Too much gray. Oh. Too light. Too light. Too light. That's okay. Just come back and just darken it up and come back. See that? Yeah. It's not a problem. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give some light and love out there to Erin and her daughter, who's you know having a little uh, feeling a little under the weather, feeling poorly Aww. there. So we're gonna give some hugs to them, and I think Colleen needed some art hugs too. And uh, we're gonna give hi them, Colleen. And Erin <laughs> would like to know how hi, Aaron. how is it that you managed to keep things? Uh, let me read the exact question here, where Erin said. Uh, how do I do it? How do you do, do, it? do it? It's a cinnamon. Do you have any advice for someone doing daily paintings? I feel like I'm losing steam. Dude, every daily painter loses steam. Mm -hmm. You know how like runners, I don't really know how runners experience this, but runners tell me that there's a wall. Yeah. <laughs> and I have decided that this is like the painter's wall. <laughs> <laughs> Not based in experience. <laughs> But I do feel like there's this thing, you're painting along, you're painting along, you're painting along. And this is a very important part in your growth because you're about to have a big breakthrough. So you sit there and you're like, man, I am like on painting. I don't know what your painting wall is. Mine was like, what was it, 4550? When I started to really question my life choices. I, I, was, I was like... A, there's crying. <laughs> it involved time. Anyhow, um, yeah, it's really natural. And when you push through, just start to get simple 
and start to be like, you know what? I don't care. I'm just going to paint this egg on this white plate. Yeah. I'm going to paint this fork. This is when it starts to come together for you and just be like, all right, what's here? I'm painting it. And it doesn't, you don't have to post everything. You're not prepping for a show. Um, what you're learning is to create a daily practice of painting and you'll get two things from it. One of it is that you're going to be okay with paintings that don't work out because yeah. you're going to realize that they're a natural part of your art journey. And two, you're going to develop a set of immediate skills that you're, that are accessible to you no matter how you feel. This is to me the number one way to move beyond painting because I feel like it and moving into it painting because it defines and restores me as a person. That's awesome. Uh-oh. You got a person there. Whoa, That's okay because I needed this microwave. You get that, micro you you get that US microwave and then let's get us onto the... You, you, you're microwaving? Yeah. So, yeah, got to get back to the painting. Sorry. <laughs> but, well, actually I can't because John is. Yeah, I got it. Go ahead. Okay, you got it? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to keep coming back in here. We're having a lot of fun. One of the, we'll do the yellow towards the end. And the reason that I do the yellow towards the end is I like to get the sense of the trees in and sort of feel where my yellow will be best placed within this space. And you can kind of see how this is just coming together as this nice, wonderful little canvas. Let's start putting in our fence. Our fence is a fabulous combo of, you know, alizarin crimson, the ultramarine blue, and even a little burnt sienna. That's the darkest value. This is, we talked about this in the quest. It's a chromatic black. For the purposes of our painting, this is chromatic black. And I'm going to run a couple fence posts here, and then there are little cross beams. One of the little fence posts is gonna be behind a tree. So, one of the things that you can't, oh no, that's going to mess me up. <laughs> I am not in a think upside down space today. I'm going to come out to, if this is the halfway mark of my painting, I'm going to come over just under the halfway mark and I'm going to bring up a little fence post and it's going to be up to about this particular, or my piece is the orange spot, but for the purposes of your painting, about two fingers down from your tree line. And I'm going to make, this is, this is a tree. This is really based on, if you live in Colorado or Wyoming, Utah, this is a, this is that fence that you see there. So I'm just bringing this in and making it about just under a half inch, a little over a quarter inch. So I have that little guy in. I'm going to get some more paint. Now this little guy is going to be a little bit, let's see how many, he's about three fingers over. All right. And he's going to lean a little bit to the left. He is going to have some weathering stuff happening. All right. I just dipped my brush in um, water and I'm getting more of my dark colored paint. For you guys that didn't see that, John is, I think, wrangling the kids. So see how this post is a little bit leaned to the left. This gives it that feeling of, oh, hey, stuff is happened here, right? Then, and this is interesting because this is going to be the same base for the trees, our chromatic black, right? Mm -hmm. Take a little of this alizarin crimson over to the space. And I'm going to put in my first tree. And my first tree does go right up the canvas. Right? It does go right up the canvas. And I'm going to have it a little bit wide to the left on the right, paint in this trunk. Just coming along, add a little more blue in sometimes. Hmm. I was bringing back coffee so they didn't see that switch. Oh, it's okay. They missed a couple. I described it verbally. Oh. It went ASMR on everybody for a I second. Went, I had to go get the coffee. How is everyone doing today? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Couldn't help it. I'm 
mean to help oh, it, yeah. but then I can't. Are we going to go into our ASMR presentation today? We're very good today. Well, we're we're going to talk good. real soft. We'll Other people are like, that's not funny. Just stop it right now. <laughs> and then some <laughs> ASMR people are like, yes, entire lessons like that, please. <laughs> this split crowd right down the middle. <laughs> Sorry about that. We had minor children and coffee emergencies. So I'm just putting in this first trunk here. Oh, I agree. I wish we had the ABBA license. I would just be playing that right now. Second tree. I need a little space between this tree and so the trunk. And I like that it has a titch of a bow. I like it bows out a little bit. I do. I like that about that tree. They, they were waxing in, in chat about how great it would be to have some ABBA. Ooh, an ABBA painting. Queen. Oh, I don't know how you do that, but that just sounds like the right thing to do. I just have to do the girls from one of their videos. Ooh. So so there's like ABBA. Is it ABBA versus ASMR? I'm not sure how that happened. It's ABBA <laughs> versus <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> I don't think they're natural enemies, but okay. I know. Is it, you, you could, uh, yeah, I don't know how, maybe. Maybe, the, maybe you can't be a dancing queen and be ASMR. I don't know. I think you can be anything Maybe you, you could. want to be. I think it's possible. In the On desert. my channel, in my space, y'all, you just be whatever you want to be. Yeah. You know, I understand the world's got opinions on everything else, but here, you just do your thing. Mm hmm Except, apparently, come ask for subscriptions because <laughs> they won't <laughs> put you right out. They will, the, our mods will ban hammer the heck out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think when we hit, um, like, I don't know, like 100,000 subs, we're going to start doing some... Um, Kind of pay it forward, help YouTube help videos. Yeah, got to figure out help how to help other art just, artists coming up. Uh, you you know, know, to maybe do better and have more success. I'll do. I'll do how to make YouTube comp. Com, I'll make more how to <laughs> YouTube videos when we get the how to paint videos that we want to get done done. Yeah, that's <laughs> that is our our essential problem, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like I can't make the videos I want to make. <laughs> <laughs> So once I have this right. structure done here, yeah. I'm going to make a cross post between these two, right? So, you know, we got over 410 likes right now. It's this is awesome. Thank, thank you, guys. guys. And I can do this now. So we know that there's like a cross post that is behind someplace. And we just want to make sure that we have implied that these exist behind these trees. It's going to be about when we highlight the tree and the post that you see their relationship to each other. Zoe said your 80s is showing. My 80s is showing? <laughs> How did I show my 80s? I'm not sure, but apparently we have. <laughs> cool. Because my 80s was awesome. <laughs> Best generation ever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just throw down. <laughs> I'm just saying that this cool purple hair was only possible because of the pioneer work that I and my friends did to our poor hair. <laughs> and and our if you follow my mom, you know how she felt about it. And our parents. Mm -hmm. If you're like, oh, is she telling the truth? Did she really color her hair when she was young? Just go by and ask my mom. She'll have a whole bunch to say about it. strawberry blonde hair. No, you should never color it. We're glad my mom doesn't have a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> It would be about old Umble in that car. Uh, you know, and it would, it would be, you know, it, it, she would have followers. She'd probably smoke us both. Oh my gosh. She would. She'd smoke us both. Let's not encourage that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm rinsing this brush out. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre over to my cad yellow. Uh -huh. Right? Right here. And I'm going to add a smidge, a small amount of my cad red. Mm hmm. And I want this still to be more to the yellow than the cat. And I'm going to come between these trees, coming down even past this, and I'm going to just start dabbing this background between the trees. I don't like to do it until I have the trees in, especially when I'm demoing it. Because it's hard sometimes when you're explaining stuff to predictively say the trees will end up exactly here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just better to wait and see where they end up, where they plant themselves in your canvas. Where they plant themselves in your canvas. Such a happy, happy time. Pulling out more of this color. 
I'm going to come down here. You kind of see it dabbing down here. And yeah, we are painting out a lot of the work that we put in, but it does show through the paint, especially through yellow because yellow is so transparent. Maybe a little smidge of more cad red light as we come up here, warming it up, but still keeping it towards the yellow. This is fun stuff for me. Y'all don't even know. I do. You do? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you hear me talking all the time. John's always like working and I'm talking and I'm like, did you hear me? And he's like, um, sure. Sure. What were we doing again? Yeah. So I'm just trying to get this luminance here. And this is how I'm going to get it. Right here. And you can even take this time. I'm going to get some just yellow and those like little orange. You and you can come out. We need to slide that to the right a little bit next time. Not, not, not that, the, the, can, the palette. There you go, perfect. Okay. And I'm going to just, just sort of sketch out just very lightly. I'll be building up on this a run of branches that kind of come around what is the sun there. See how we did that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not, I don't know. Yellow and white. Just... Not everything gone, but just something that shows this space, these branches that come out. And before I can put the branches that are in front of the leaves behind them, I've got to get this painted in. Mm -hmm. So there's always a reason for the uh, layers that I have. The layers. The layers. They have reasons to be there. The layers and the ogres have reasons. <laughs> So it's kind of a weird C, but I do make a point of trying to keep it open and loose so it doesn't get too tied up on me, like you do. And I might grab a little of my cad red into this yellow mixture I have over here and orange this up some down here. Now, you can, if you feel like it's needed anywhere, you can take some of this orange and orange up some of your landscape. Orange it up. Maybe here. Orange it up. Just, you know, do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do, guys. Rinse, 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 rinse. And then I'm going to get back into that dark tree color that I made, which was the ultramarine and the burnt umber and a little of my alizarin crimson. All right? Mm -hmm. That was my dark, my chromatic black. I'm going to come over here, right off this, and make a little tree branch that's going off this way. Come up here, maybe make a little tree branch going off into the sky. Just using the edge of my bristles. I think what gets people about landscapes is they're just not clear of the layers. All right? They're just not, oh, what's the layers? What are we doing? Alright, so putting that little branch there. And that's just this nice little bit of branches, right? That you have coming off your tree. Now I'm going to pull a little of my blue into this mixture over here. And I've got the previous mixture, but I'm just working my blue in. I'm going to get a little white. My light side of the trunk is going to be on the right side, because where's my sun? Right here. And I'm going to come on the inside of my tree and just start lightening. See, I'm just dashing. I'm going to come under this branch just a little bit inside the trunk here. Just lightening this a bit. And it might surprise you that the color feels so purple, but what you'll find is sometimes these colors make a landscape feel more like a landscape than anything else. going to bring this down here to the bottom of my painting. Doesn't need to be as dark there, but I'm just as strong of a highlight, just working it out. 
quit highlight at the top of that branch. This is just the very first layer of that bark feeling, that tree feeling that we've got going on here. The other place that this will really, really go, let me get a little more white into it, we'll start coming along just the top of the fence here with this. Sorry, I'm coming down into the fence. Okay, you're, you're like, wow. I know, I got plans. All right, good. I'm going to be now, working this whole area. Okay, I'll stay in that area now. Okay. I'm going to pull a little bit of this across the fence post here, and then a little bit right there. See, because that's where the light's going to be hitting. Top, top, top. Just a little bit on the top there. Brush this up. Now wipe this, but don't rinse it, interestingly enough. Okay. I'm going to come over into the yellow. This purple will be very graying to this yellow ochre. I mean, yellow oxide. Yeah. I'm going to add a smidge of white. If it's not gray enough, come over and get some, because you don't want it in its bright range. It's going to feel more yellow than you think. I just... On some of this here, a little bit underneath there. Just a little bit on the side of the trunk. Just loose and open. Just enjoying it. Enjoying yourself. Enjoy yourself. Yes. Or we'll come get you. No, we won't. <laughs> Don't worry. Nobody write you me a panicky are letter. You hereby forced to have fun. I'm going to just add a little bit of this here to the wood. A lot of this is about creating this like kind of crazy texture. We got so many plants happening there. Now, I'm not rinsing my brush, but I'm going to get some of my burnt sienna on it. I'm going to come and just add a little of that to my wood here. It can take a few passes on these, these wood areas to really, really get the feeling that I'm going for. I'm going to go ahead and add a little of that into the tree. Not everywhere. All right, just a little bit. Back into my not rinsing like a crazy person. And now I'm going to pull out quite a lot more white into this gray. Just put a little bit right there. And I'm going to come right here. Just keeping that maybe just a kiss right there just to show that these are these are out there sometimes I think you're going to go get paint you're just looking at the picture I'm just looking at the picture <laughs> I know I'm erratic <laughs> well no it's, it's just it's sometimes I'm like I go to the palette and you're not there and I'm like, now uh. a lot of the rest of it I will be kind of placing in here as I'm putting in the leaves and that and that really do you like how that's going I need a sip of my coffee I you sip of your coffee. How are you guys do it? Landscaping, oh super my fun. Oh gosh, they're having so much fun. See out how that is? That's this. already kind of cool. Already, you'd be like, I'd post that on social media. Uh -huh. I'd put that on Instagram, tweet it out. So how much? The Sherpa says we're we're pretty close to this, aren't we? Yeah, we got some. Yeah, not we're, that far we're away. We're not that far at all. We got some little little leavy leavies to put in there. If this and... goes really well, there's a barn I'm working on with a lake in front of it and this extraordinary kind of spiritual sky that's all reflected in the lake with the barn. Uh, if it yeah. goes well, I'd like to do it. So now, no, will not rinsing your brush after a very long time damage the brush anyway? No, no. You just clean it when you're done. But every once in a while you do have, there's this weird landscapey thing where you just, you get sort of like, I have good pigment on here. I paid good money. It unifies the painting. Uh, you wipe. It's, it's, it's a natural progression. It's not something you would just fall into and know to do, but it's something like if you're out in a, 
painting tour or on an artist retreat and you've got somebody painting with you, that might be something that they would talk about. And you'd be like, oh, huh. All this right, is well, the thing I can do. All right. Let's see. So we're going to start building this up like you do. Like you do. Like you do. What? So I'm going to pull, I'm going to get a little of my alizarin crimson and a smidge of my ultramarine blue. Owl says it sounds like she has another awesome painting coming. Could be. Could be in some, some different I'm going to come up here in the corner and start putting in this deep purple. Yeah, I think so. I've done some watercolor studies. If you were in the chat, you've seen them. Not to, you know, be like, hey, you've got to make the chat. But you got to make the chat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to just put these dark colors in. And I'm just, you know, dabbing the brush across here. This upper corner being my darkest space. You know, I'm going okay. to just pull this down. I don't want to take out my trunk completely, but I want this deep value to be here. And I also don't want to take out my branch completely, but I want some deep value to be here. I'm going to pull it across a little bit here. There's a couple other places I need to put this darker, darker value. It's kind of purpley. Kind of love it. You know, go ahead and put some right here. And then we're going to come down low with this. I'm letting John know where it's going because yeah. otherwise he's like, what's oh, it was just happening? Off, it was just off the page there. So, okay. So just a little bit right here down at these parts of the trunk. Um, leave some space because we're going to do something special in one of these trunks that I'm kind of excited about. I'm going to put a little bush here. See how that layers? Huh. That space between these two trees. Bush there. Let's put in our other little bushy thing coming off this thing. Definitely always make action sounds when painting. I agree. I have to make the one to move my camera around. <laughs> <laughs> Never ever get so into adulting that you forget how to play and have fun. Especially when you have a robot camera. I'm going to add a little dark value back here maybe of this. Just a little bit somewhere, maybe right there. It's just important to me. If you overdo anything, you can always take it back out. It's just, and I'm going to put out some more alizarin crimson hue. Why is it hue? Because the real thing, also poisonous <laughs> and really expensive. <laughs> but just don't eat it. Hmm. I don't eat, ever eat just any paint. <laughs> Unless it's made of fry. I have a friend, actually, there's a collab coming up where we break that whole roll. But oh, yeah. you'll see that later. Oh, and uh, uh, Emily was pa uh, was passing along that there is a huge sale going on at Michael's right now. We took yeah. advantage of that, too. Great, great deal on canvases and stuff. So go out there, grab your coupons, and go hit that. You know. All right. I'm mixing my Lizrin Crimson with my Cad Red, and you're going to mm. notice it gives me Hold this on. just gorgeous rust that I can go right over this deep color that I laid in. And I love it. I love it. Start laying in this extraordinary, beautiful tree that I love so much. This tree makes me so happy. It grew from love. It did. It, it, it grew in the garden of your mind. It grew in the garden of my mind. Where are you? Mind. Okay, you're going to have to help me where you're okay, going. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to, everywhere that I've got, I'm going down here now. I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. I'm just like. I'm like, come here. Okay, I'm there. Just a couple here. <laughs> and then I'm going to come a little bit over here. A little bit. I'm the Sherpa tracker. And She's guess where I'm going to go now? I don't know. Up top. Oh, all right. Let's go up there. Oh, oh, too fast. Too fast. I am too fast. All right. I am too fast. I, this is actually, I'm a pretty good demo artist, like for explaining and demoing. Because I do cook along at a good clip. And that's a that's a skill, if y'all didn't know it. Put some down through here. I'm trying to make sure that I have my dark value. I'm going to break this tree branch again. Tree trunk. Tree tr oh. Right. By breaking it, I'm creating this layer can come forward then. And we're going to pull this forward a little bit in some of these leaves. Take them out here. Just dashes. I like to do the corner to get these dashes is how I get them. 
I love, thank you guys so much for allowing me to be part of your lives and teach this and share this mm -hmm. with everyone. It really means a lot. Now, can you recover the, the colors you've just been using there real quick? Oh, yeah. So we have Cad Yellow Medium, Cad Red Light, Alizarin Crimson, Thalo Green, Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, somewhere here there's a little bit of yellow ochre left, Titanium White, and Glazing Medium. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. I like it. And, and you're really close to being done on this. I am. Shockingly, really shockingly close to being done. I'm going to come over and add a little of my cad yellow to this mixture. I th I think Gives I me kind of a neutralized orange if you see that here. Are you putting highlights out there? Let's yeah, start to. Cause it's fun to paint in the morning. Happy painting time. <laughs> <laughs> My kids live in a really off key opera. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. I'm just bringing this over here. I'm just starting to pull these layers, the depths. I don't want to lose all my light yeah. here. You know, don't. I'm going to add a smidge of this to the top of this here. And a smidge of this down here in this little cluster. Yeah. Just a little bit. And then, and then on your fence post? And then uh, a little, little, little on the fence post we're going to start talking about. So I like that little light. I remember when you did that. Right like, here. Ah, yeah. How big is that? And a little. But we, it's not the only light we have. We have a brighter highlight. We're just starting to talk yeah. about the highlight on the fence post and the tree trunks. Yeah, those are really cool. They're important. You can also put some right there. Well, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm going to put some on the trunk. Okay. Just a little bit. Just a little on there. Okay, so we're starting to... We don't want to lose the dark of our fence post. And if our fence post gets too bright, because this would be in shadow. Yeah. Be sure, you can even go back with just ultramarine, but, but at least take some ultramarine and some alizarin crimson and make sure that you don't lose the depth. Oh yeah, you want them really dark in there. Some of, You need some real dark, right? For that high level of color. Because these aren't backlit, so if it got too bright for you, be sure and make those have those deep, rich values. Oh yeah, that looks really cool. Yeah. You can actually, interestingly enough, take even some just ultramarine blue and white and tap a couple places on your tree trunk with it. Not everywhere, just a couple places. Weird thing you can do. I like to do it. I like to do it. Yeah. All right. So I'm just cooking along now. All right. So I'm going to take a little of my cad red medium over to my... Cad, no, this is Cad Red Light. It's over to my yellow, Cad Yellow Medium. This is going to be quite a bright orange that I'm putting out over in this tree. I'm going to put out a little more Cad Yellow and a little more white because I'm, I'm getting oh, yeah. low on some of those colors. And that's what we have coming out next for the rest of this little kit and caboodle. Mm -hmm. And we're nearly done, guys. This is what's we crazy. Are. We are nearly done. We're just not shorting anything, if that makes sense. I'm going to put a little more yellow into it. You can even add some white if you need to for coverage. Just bring some of that light over here. Grabbing d dustings. You see how it's dustings? Dustings. Can, oh, can you flip that? I'm going to zoom in on just the brush mix there. You hold it right there. Now flip that over just a little bit. So there's like, I got a little white on the corner. got some cad yellow. Now I got a little roll mix the brush of over too there. so you can see this side too. See how you have the other side loaded? Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So we're just, we're just starting to talk about this in some way that we can do anything about it. Get a little... White and yellow, just putting it right there. See how that just creates the 
yeah. illusion that there's just light happening here. And then put some right here. I just tell the tree its story. You want to tell that tree story. Get some just cad on your brush. Be sure and put some of the pure cad out. This is interestingly enough just one of the colors that you really want to do that's a surprise in these leaves just to create that feeling. All right? Have that going, have this going. Rinse out my brush. I'm going to get just a little of the white and cad yellow. I'm going to come along here on the fence and create a smidge of a very bright highlight at the top. Top of the fence post super lightly. Maybe a little bit down here, a little bit peeking there. You can take this yellow and white and kind of come along the top of this little bush that we have happening here. Bring it down. Another, definitely, definitely come here and put some dappled sunlight. It's important. Just shows that it's happening out there. The light's coming down. You can do a smidge here, smidge here. See any little openings that need it on the tree, hit them. Rinse this out. Last, and yet to me, really important. I'm going to take a little of my white over to my alizarin. And I'm going to start dashing this incredible color around my tree. To me, this is the anchor of the painting. This is. This is what I really love. I'm just going to bring a bit of this color here and there. Did, now, were you using the translucent white there? No. This is just the titanium. We haven't even gotten into the power of mixing white or zinc white. Okay. So you have, you're not using that at all? No. I just want, I wanted everyone today to know, because they're probably going to show up for another landscape, to start looking for mixing white or zinc white, because they make a big difference in landscape painting. Try not to tell you that. I don't ever ask you to like get stuff if it doesn't have a value for you, but if it does have a value, I may bug you about it. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of this down here. Okay. There you go. Hold on. You're okay. And I'm going to come right here. All right, now there. Just a few of these little leaves. And then if you need any out on the landscape, this is the time to pop it out. And then we're going to do the surprise at the end. What's the surprise at the end? Now, in general, I won't put black in a landscape painting, but for what I'm about to do, I'm going to definitely, definitely have some black. I'm going to mix it into my ultramarine blue so it doesn't feel completely alien in the landscape, but I just need this to feel deeper than anything else that we have. And I think I'm going to come on this trunk here. And I'm going to make a heart. And take up most of my tree trunk to do it. Can you see it? Yeah. At all? Yeah. Okay. It'll really pop when I highlight it, but right now I've just got to get the shadow in. And then I'm going to get my smallest little fussy brush that I can. And we're going to put R plus M. You can put the initials in on your painting that are meaningful to you. And I would highly recommend you do it. And to make this pop, I'm going to get into a little of my white and a little of my cad yellow. I'm going to come and just put a highlight on it. Oh, that's cool. Just a little bit of a highlight on the letters.
There we go. That looks sharp. Yeah, just a little something. And I think I'll put out a little signature over here. Get into my maybe a little alizarin. Just don't want it to stand out too much in the background. All right, a light little signature. Fallen Meadow. That's pretty awesome. Live. Oh my gosh, Cinema, we had so many people out here with us today. So I'm going to start by saying, well, gosh, thank you guys. I'm going to go over here just real quick while we're doing this. Where's my buttons? Buttons, buttons, buttons pushing. I'm going to put on some, there you go, a little dance music for you while we're going to get out of here or getting ready to get out of our little show thank you guys for coming we've had a huge party today there's been like oh, four, 350 400 people here we've had almost 500 likes i think we're at three 480 right now 481 so you push the button you push your button push your button Push up those likes to a really yeah. high number, and for sure, what number should it be? And I'll have to do the barn in reflection, the barn in the I light. You're going to do them anyway. I am. You're going to just, just give me a bunch of likes. Just, just go do it anyway. I don't even know why you use it. I don't know, because it seems like something you could do. <laughs> <laughs> we don't hold out. We really we don't. I'm already designing on it, so. So, you know, guys, I just wanted to say thank you, guys. We love you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Do all those things that, you know, we need you to do. Um, is there anything else, Cinnamon, we need to say before we go? Just love you. Have a really, really, whatever week this is in. Right whatever. now we're in Thanksgiving week. But whatever week this video finds you in, yeah. take a minute. And celebrate yourself and give yourself some peace and some well-being in your life because you absolutely deserve it. Take some creative time. Over 500 likes. Whoa. Okay. And thank you for the thank kisses. You thank you. We'll see you at the easel Thursday or again really soon on some other video. You guys be beautiful. Bye-bye. Okay. Now I got to push the button fast. Oh, gosh. Here we go. Ah.